going to kick off this morning with a um, actually one long session on Project Basecamp, and Reed is going to be going over all the gory details. But I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Project Basecamp, who was involved, what we did, and, and what were some of the results before we got into the technical details. Uh, Project Basecamp really started, um, well, it's been something we've been thinking about for a while, but the final push was at Black Hat this year. And I know some of you were there. Uh, Dylan Beresford was there presenting his findings on Siemens S7 PLCs. And uh, they were kind enough to invite me to watch. And there was a press conference after it. And at the press conference, they had SCADA security experts who had participated and were presenting there. And Jonathan Polet, who is extremely talented man, great competitor, great consultant, hire him, he'll do a fantastic job for you. But he said something that just really crystallized the issue in my mind. He, he was sitting on stage and they were asking him about the vulnerabilities and he said, well, everyone in the industry knows that PLCs are vulnerable. It's like, well, he's, he's right. If you are in control system security, you know PLCs are vulnerable. And we all know this, and we've known it, I mentioned it yesterday, I'm not sure where Eric is sitting in the room today, but Eric was demonstrating this back in 2002. We all know it, and it was just such a sad statement. This kind of ties back to my remarks yesterday morning. It was such a sad statement that we all know it, yet we're sitting on stage in a big venue saying, yeah, yeah, we all know it, it's okay, you know. So we said, what can we do to change that? Because remember we said, Actually, let me fix this. This is not. Let's start this over. Technical difficulty. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's the way it was supposed to be. So everyone knows this. So I looked, you know, I thought about fire sheep, and, and I heard chuckles in the room, and people were thinking about this. And I said, this was now, it moved a lot faster than, than the control system industry, but this was actually something very similar. Uh, some gentlemen in 2007, 2008 were able to show that you could hijack a session because the, the cookies were not encrypted, so you could hijack a Facebook session, a Twitter session, Hotmail, and such. And that was well known in 2007, 2008. There were a lot of presentations at conferences, but nothing was done about it. So it was another one of those things, well, everyone knows this is a problem. So Eric Butler, a few years later, came up with this Firefox plugin called FireSheep that now made it possible for anyone sitting in a coffee shop who could use a browser to hijack a session. And guess what? It, it got people's attention. Even though everyone knew before, now that everyone could do it, things changed very quickly. And those <coughs> vendors that had done nothing about it very quickly added the capability to select HTTPS and solve this problem, to force it, and then shortly after that made it the default condition. So we said, well, maybe we need a fire ship, uh, a fire sheep moment in PLC security. So we said, let's try to do the same thing with a variety of PLCs. And we could have done it all in digital bond, but it would have taken a really long time because we're a small company. So we decided to share the workload. And we had six researchers working on Basecamp. Two of them are anonymous. They're not that anonymous. They're not the, the anonymous group, but two people were working for companies who would prefer that they not uh, be known that they were participating in this, but they graciously donated their time. Uh, you see Jacob Kitchell, he's here. He, he's part of the team. Uh, that's this uh, gentleman on the bottom, that's Ruben Santa Marta. And uh, I think a lot of you know Dylan Beresford. He participated. And then uh, Reed Whiteman here. I wasn't even sure that was you when I saw the picture you sent me, <laughs> but that's his Twitter picture. Uh, Reed Whiteman headed up the effort. 
And so each one of them got at least one PLC because we had a number of PLCs sitting in our lab from previous projects. Uh, we had another one donated to us uh, as part of the project. So we gave each one of them a PLC and said, let's see what you can do with it. These are the lists of the products in Project Basecamp to date. One of the nice thing about this list is they are very popular, very widely used, many of them full feature PLCs. Um, especially if you look at the GED20, the Modicon, and the Rockwell automation stuff. Now it's, it's something, and actually the Schweitzer um, is a little bit different, but it's very widely used in the electric system. If you go into substations and you see blue things, that's, that's SEL stuff. Um, it's very hard for a researcher to get their hands on these because these cost uh, typically you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars for the bigger ones there. We, we asked the researchers to focus on these attack categories up there. And the attack categories were selected uh, based on a couple of things. Based on previous vulnerabilities, for example, uploading custom firmware. That's the Project Boreas vulnerability that was demonstrated a couple of years ago. Uh, some of these other things that were done were things that uh, Dylan had done to a Siemens S7, and we wanted to see could they be done to an, uh, another PLC. So we asked the researchers to try to hit each one of these areas. And being researchers slash hackers, you know, they're not the most disciplined group you, you'd want. So they, they kind of all went in their own direction. They tried many other things. Um, they did eventually report back on all of these. But uh, I would say that um, each researcher probably did it in its own way. So I don't think we can say it was a unique or a, a uniform effort across all systems in all categories. But we wanted to quantify uh, what we found. And this is a quick snapshot of, of what we found. And again, Reed is going to go into all the technical details on this uh, that you're going to want to see. You'll notice here that, um, that uh, the red X means really bad, highly exploitable, major simple problem. The uh, yellow exclamation mark means there is a vulnerability there, but it's a little bit harder to exploit. And then the green check is good. Green check means they tried, it didn't succeed. So you see, for example, on resource exhaustion, most of them did okay on that. And, and one quick thing you can see here, while well, I, would, I would make two conclusions from this. One, you see there's a lot of problems because there's mostly red and yellow up there. But you also see that not all of them are equal. So the, the GE device was by far the worst, uh, with uh, Schneider, Monocon, Quantum a close second. But then you get, you get sort of the middle, and then the SEL device actually has two green check marks and, and no red Xs. So some of the vendors have done some work or have followed better basic engineering practices. And again, uh, we'll, we'll get into the details. That's what most of the presentation is. It'll go over a lot of those red X's. The last thing I want to tell you as, as a way of introduction is, remember I said we wanted a fire sheet moment. So the other part of Basecamp was to create a set of tools that would allow uh, consultants, vendors, owner-operators, security assessors, or anyone who wants to, to actually demonstrate those red X's to their clients, to the vendors themselves. So we're, we're doing two things. One is we're working with Rapid7 on their Metasploit to release Metasploit modules that will allow you to do some of these exploits. And actually, there will be a press release going out today at 11 o'clock um, that the first module is actually in their code base and being released for the GED20 password retrieval. So that's, that's actually happening. Um, another interesting thing about security researchers slash hackers is they tend to do things at the last minute. So a lot of these, a lot of those red X's we got um, 
last Friday, Tuesday, an email, uh, Reed got an email at 3 in the morning this morning with, <laughs> with another thing. So uh, we have a number of other modules that are written that are going through Rapid7 QA. So Rapid7 will be releasing these as, as they're approved. If for some reason that gets delayed very long, we'll, we will release some on our site next week. Uh, a good example of, of some of the problems is that GED20 interactive command line module um, that Reed wrote, and he'll show you. Rapid7 had never seen anything like that before. These PLCs are just different. You know, how, how they weren't sure how to integrate a command line interface into the Metasploit framework. So they wanted to think about it a little bit. And uh, they were very good, HD Moore, and, and we were working with a guy, I think it was Todd Beardsley. Yeah. Um, we were just working with a couple of their people because we wanted to keep it quiet until S4, but now that it's, it's public, they'll get more of their developers involved, and I'm sure they'll figure it out quickly. And, it, and as it says, more to come. Those, uh, the few we listed on there are just a couple of them, and I think as you go through your presentation, you're going to talk, Reed will talk about other modules that are coming. But we think that's really important that uh, you have, this is, this is what I'm calling our fire sheet moment. To, people have the ability to do this. There's one other, one other set of tools that's available. I think most of you know we work with uh, Tenable quite a bit in our bandolier security audit files. Um, and Tenable's Nessus scanner is, in terms of market share, the big boy out there by far. Uh, so uh, these SCADA plugins are being added to Tenable's Nessus scanner today. And they'll, they'll be announcing that at 11 o'clock today as well. They're being added to um, the Nessus scanner so you could scan those devices and find out if, if you haven't changed your defaults or if you have vulnerable services up. Um, they also have added this to their PVS, their passive vulnerability scanner. That's not really widely used yet, in, at least in the control system space. But the idea would be they would know if this if you were using, let's say, a Modicon quantum default HTTP sure. password, they would capture that and send an alert. All the, one, all the passwords? Or um, all the little surprise passwords? I don't, I don't want to say all the passwords because I'm not, sure, I'm, not, I'm not sure we know each and every password that's in there, but the ones that we know. All the ones you know. Okay, good enough. Yeah, because yeah, there's, there's actually more than... There's more than we thought there were right. from the last not announcements. Just the ones in the user yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that'll be that'll also be coming out today, and and we'll as we can find more in Basecamp that would fit in a scanner type product, those will be released as well. And I would expect that other scanners will integrate these as well. It's it will make the information available to other companies as well. And. Just to let you know why we call this project Basecamp, uh, some of you know we call all our research projects, we gave up trying to come up with clever acronyms a while ago, so we call all our projects after some type of climbing gear or climbing related uh, uh, thing. And we're trying to think, well, what would tie in with what we were doing here? And we called it Basecamp because we feel like on PLC security, we're way, we're, we're down on the ground. We have hardly started climbing yet. So we're hoping through this project we'll at least get up a little bit where we might be able to see the summit, but there's still going to be a, a lot of work before we actually get these things secure. So we kind of view this as just a, a first step maybe to help prod the industry to move forward to do something about it. And I'm going to now let Reed give you all the stuff you really want, all, all the technical